Hello, welcome back to Fred in the Shed, and we are up in the Radio Shack. And on this video, and in this box, we have a Chinese replica, a clone, if you like, of a U Loop passive loop shortwave antenna. I believe the original was made by Air Spy. And you can still get the original loop. Um, it's about £40 with the delivery. It's a passive loop antenna. A lot of people used a little LNA preamplifier. Again, I think the original was Air Spy. The one I've got in the shack, I got this from Banggood. It is a copy, a clone, but mostly it's cheap. It really is cheap. It comes in at about £15 with the uh, delivery so far cheaper than the original antenna you can also buy an LNA little preamplifier for about the same price so I suppose about £30 gets you the whole package so uh, probably just under half the price of what the original would cost the £15 delivered from Banggood, um, it's the best price that I've seen. I think it makes the antenna a bargain. But just be a little bit careful if you search for this. I've seen this antenna priced much more expensive, especially on Amazon in the UK. You don't really want to be paying an awful lot more than £15 for this antenna. Not much of an unboxing experience, unfortunately. There's not an awful lot in the box, but it's got everything you need. We have two little black connection boxes. Um, the bottom box on the loop is a T-shaped low, low loss wide band ballon. And then the top one is a phase inverter. Then we have the loop itself. So we have two times one meter sections that make up the uh, loop. Not quite sure what coax this is. It looks like RG402 to me doesn't actually say but I think that looks like 402 it's semi rigid so it should hold the circular shape although um, if you're not going to say hang it in a window or something you probably will need to brace it on a pole I've seen people do this on a broomstick and it seems to work absolutely fine and then we have the support line feed here SMA connectors on it and again that looks like RG174 to me now what we have to understand with this loop, it is a passive loop. Hang on. These little cheap loop antennas that I've been testing recently, they're really aimed at people that cannot put up an outside antenna. With shortwave radio, it's always best if you can string up a long wire, even a basic piece of wire, outside down your garden or wherever. You'll always get better reception. For some people though, in a house where you can't do that or if you live in a flat or a condo you just can't you just can't do it so what you'll find is when you string up your long wire indoors it will work it will pick up signals but you'll also bring in a lot of man-made noise and that can ruin the hobby a loop is far more selective at the signals coming in it will reject a lot of man-made noise the flip side of it is that with a small loop like this one when we put it together it doesn't bring in so much signal you don't get so much gain so your signals will be quieter and in that respect the loop tends to suit SDR type radios you've seen those little SDR RTL dongles um, radios like that where you can turn the gain right up same thing with these little portable SDR radios normally you can go in there and you again you can boost the gain right up it might not work so well if you've got a more traditional shortwave radio such as this one and you just plug it into the uh, antenna socket you might find that there isn't really enough gain to bring in the signals what I found personally is if you're going to use an indoor loop um, I found it's better to, to get a crocodile clip like this and crocodile clip it onto the end of the radio antenna and then you're using the built-in amplifier from the radio and I, I found that works quite well a lot of people that are using these on SDR radios 
generally buy the little inline LNA low, low noise amplifier, the little pre amplifiers. They're not expensive and uh, that helps to boost the signal. And again, with SDR, especially if it's got DSP, digital sound processing, you can then reject pretty much all of the noise and then home in on the signal. And you can, with, with, on, on that setup, you can get some really, really good results. So here's my setup in the window. We've got the U loop um, set up there. I'm sorry that we're having to use the window as a backdrop because it's knocking out the camera there, but you can sort of see how it's set up. I haven't used the supplied uh, feed cable. It was just too long. So I've got a shorter, shorter cable there. And it pretty much takes up the whole window. And at the moment, um, we're picking up some CW coming through. So we should be able to uh, decode that. So we're going to change it to CW now. So I, hopefully we'll start um, to decode some of this, some of this CW coming in. And there we go. It's working. Look at that. Forward pack. 
to get a really good drive in more and then when they give it to the backs the backs get smashed behind the gain line and then the ball gets kicked through and the boards get their heads out you know pick, look up and turn around 50 yards behind you think what are you backs doing that is the equivalent thank you for traveling with cabri fd t's and c's apply visit winnerweekend.cabri.co.uk you work hard Conclusion time then, this very cheap U-Loop clone antenna. Good points and not so good points. Let's get the not so good points out the way first. Firstly, I have no problem at all with the coaxial cable that makes up the loop part of the antenna. It even pretty much holds its shape when you put it together, so you need no support. When you hang it in a window, no issues. However, when it comes down to the sections that you connect it to, which is the phase inverter, which is off camera, and then this uh, T-shaped ballon, I, I do think that these are certainly made at a price, and a very cheap price at that. When I put this together, for example, this one here, um, it totally refused to go into the socket side of the SMA. And when I looked closely, the inside of the socket, like the female part, if you like, the sort of copper tube, it, when it had been made, it had been made slightly crushed. So there was no way that that would go in. Solution-wise, it wasn't that hard. I mean, I just got like a little bradle, put it in there and wiggled it about slightly, opened it up put it in and it worked straight away but just a little bit disappointing on the quality control likewise doing up these connections here um, they go tight and then I noticed that the in the part here the locking rings um, were loose so that they started to turn I have just put a little spanner on these and uh, tightened them up I think if I was going to be using this uh, antenna regularly, I was taking it apart and putting it back together, I think I would just get a little bit of thread lock or some super glue and just run it around those threads to stop that undoing. And as I mentioned earlier, um, these are very sort of cheap plastic boxes. Um, if I was going to leave this outside, and, and you could, it, you could, could use it as an outside antenna, but I certainly would have to take these apart and I would have to silicon them and I did read a review on one guy when he took this apart and he replaced the internal wiring with low loss coaxial cable. So that was a little bit of an upgrade at the same time. And as I mentioned, obviously these connections, and it'd be the same for any antenna, you'd have to put some of that rubberized amalgamation tape around there to keep it waterproof. Obviously made on a very cheap budget, but in fairness, it is a very cheap antenna. Currently, around £12 something on Banggood with delivery just under £15. I mean, you couldn't buy the each individual component yourself and make it any cheaper. I'm sure it'd cost you probably almost double that. So yeah, you have to forgive a little bit of the build quality for what you're spending. What about performance? I think it depends how you want to judge performance. If we want to talk about gain, from the antenna. I think that it's comparable to a standard whip antenna that you would attach to your radio. It certainly doesn't produce as much gain as a long wire, especially if you can get that long wire outside. As far as the frequency range on a shortwave, well, my testing was a little bit crude. It was fine on the lower part of the broadcast band, uh, 40 meters and 20 meters hand bands quite quite good actually on sideband it started to peter off as we started going up 16 uh, 16 megahertz 17 i wasn't able to really find anything above 18 megahertz on shortwave and on the cb band on a 27 megahertz 11 meters i, I got absolutely nothing it might have just been on the, on those particular days the uh, skip level was quite low radio propagation wasn't very good um, but i heard absolutely nothing at all on 11 meters and 10 meters if you're completely new to shortwave radio listening maybe you've bought one of these very cheap 
SDR type radios, they are very sensitive and they'll work well with a loop antenna. And you're probably struggling, you're probably using the uh, telescopic whip antenna, you're picking up loads of buzzing, loads of interference in your house. Well, yeah, 15 pounds, you know, get yourself a loop, hang it up in a window, try different windows around your house or around your flat, different orientations, and you'll be surprised. Um, I'm sure you will find a window where all of that buzzing, all of that interference is drastically reduced and you can get on with enjoying listening to shortwave radio and ham radio. So as always, there is the thumbs up from Fred in the Shed. Thank you for sticking with the videos. Thank you for your support. A small channel, I don't get many views, so I do appreciate every one of you. If you get a second, as always, hit me a thumbs up down below. I like to see that, and I really would appreciate it, and thank you for that. But as always, of course, please, please, please stay safe, look after each other, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Oh, yeah.